Second type, combustion reactions. When you hear the word combustion, what do you think of when you hear combustion? Fire. Yes, you think of fire, right? When something's burning in a, in a flame, it's called a combustion reaction. So for combustion reactions, like how can you spot these guys? Um, it involves some kind of heat, some kind of flame, flames, heat, that kind of thing. And for combustion reactions, there's no glassware involved. The chemical itself touches the flame. So there's no test tubes, there's no beakers, nothing like that. The actual chemical is in contact with the flame. The flame is a source of oxygen. The heat is kind of, oh, it's the activation energy to get the reaction going, to kind of get it over that hump to get the, the reaction moving. Um, and the oxygen comes from the flame. So for combustion reactions, they can be further broken down into organic and inorganic combustion. We'll see a couple examples of each. The inorganic combustion type, it gives you the generic reaction here, A plus O2 goes to AO. It's really, it looks just like a synthesis reaction that we're kind of marrying A and oxygen together. Except combustion is always something plus oxygen and synthesis is just any old element with any old element. For combustion reactions, we're always going to have oxygen as a reactant. Always. A, for the inorganic combustion types, is always going to be some kind of metal. So it's going to look like metal plus oxygen makes some compound with the metal and the oxygen together. Just like a synthesis reaction, we're just going to marry them together. It's just something plus oxygen. It's like a specific type of synthesis. Okay, so they give you an example there. If you took calcium and oxygen, married those guys together, what would happen? And maybe we could try out number seven. What if we took barium and oxygen and put those guys together? Well, we'd take the element barium and the element oxygen, smoosh them together, make a compound out of them. Anytime you make a new compound, you have to check your charges. So you check your periodic table and you'd say, oh, barium's in the second column, so it's plus two. Oxygen's minus two, it's good. So plus two minus two, we just write BAO. Then we go back and we balance overall. So we've got two oxygens on the left, we need two on the right, and then two bariums. Okay. Just like a synthesis, it's just something plus oxygen. That's the only difference. What about the organic combustion types? For organic combustion, when you hear that term organic combustion or organic chemistry, organic, it means something carbon-based. So if you really like chemistry, you take chemistry classes in college, you could take a whole class called organic chemistry that's based on reactions that have to do with carbon-based compounds. A whole class is all this stuff. So you might see here some examples of these guys are something called hydrocarbons. They've got hydrogen and carbon in them. Sometimes you might have oxygen, sometimes not. But for those guys, you take anything that's carbon-based. If it's combustion, we're going to add oxygen every time. That's what makes combustion. Combustion is that oxygen. And then the products, this is one that you just kind of have to memorize. Whenever you have an organic combustion, the products are always going to be carbon dioxide and water 100% of the time. All the other types you'll have to kind of solve for what gets made. This is the one case where we just have to memorize what gets made. Well, it makes predicting the products really easy. Once we have that memorized, that we know it's going to make CO2 and water every time. And the only thing that you have to really do is balance. So we'd say, okay, CO2 plus water. And we'd have to fix our carbons, fix our hydrogens. And then we've got 10 oxygens on the right, 6 plus 4. 
So we need 10 oxygens on the left. 